Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Wapakoneta High School, where tonight, in round two of the state playoffs, the Wapakoneta Redskins welcome in the Bellbrook Golden Eagles. Hello, everyone. I'm Danny Holbrook, alongside Scott Nurse and our entire WLSN crew. Our pregame tonight is sponsored by Silver Shears Salon and Spa, offering a full-service salon with experienced stylists and top products. Visit them on Blackhoof Street in Wapak, Facebook, or Silver Shears Salon and Spa.com. Scott, if you like Smash Mouth football, you're going to love tonight's game. Both these teams love to pound the rock. Yeah, no question about it, and they both have the tools to do so. They got great offensive lines, great running backs. Let's take a look at the keys for the game, Scott. I got three keys tonight. Number one, give me some time. Wapakoneta wants to win the time of possession game, and to do that, they got to execute at the line of scrimmage and not have any turnovers. They're plus three on the year. If the offensive line can win the battle in the trenches, Bellbrook's offense stays off the field, and they average 29 points a game. Number two, mix it up, big strike. Wapakoneta has very strong rushing attack with Jason Alice and Connor Mextroth with almost 2,000 yards between them. But I think the real key is Caleb Moyer. He's a rising talent at quarterback. Look for a timely big pass play to complement that offense. Bellbrook has an excellent defense, 13 points per game. Got to look for an opportunity to strike. And number three, focus on the details. It's the little things that can make or break a victory. Penalties or drive killers, can't have them. Special teams execution is critical to field position. Knowing your individual responsibility in the team context and doing your job is essential to get the win. Halftime adjustments by the coaches can shift momentum. Got to be relentless and play like every play is win or go home, because it is. Absolutely. It's Wapakoneta, it's Bellbrook, it's a rematch from last year's tournament game. You got all the action right here on WSN. Welcome back to Wapakoneta High School, round two of the state playoffs. The Wapakoneta Redskins and the Bellbrook Golden Eagles. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Scott Nurse. And Scott, when you talk about great running backs, you got two fantastic ones tonight. Yeah, no question about it. I really like Jason House for Wapakoneta. Uh, we've seen him play a couple times yes, this year, yes. several times this year. He's just he's just power. He's that's all you can say about him. You take a look at the Bellbrook Golden Eagles. Jeff Jenkins is their head coach. They are nine and two. They come out of the Southwestern Buckeye League, average 27.3 a game. They give up only 13.4. And you mentioned that in the pregame, Scott. You take a look at Wapakoneta, led by Travis Moyer, the fantastic coach. 10-1 this year at Western Buckeye League champions. Before him, before coming to Wapakoneta, he was at Cyrus Winford. They get 25.1 a game, and they give up 10.9. So defense, 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 Scott. Yeah, no question about it. And offense, offense, offense <laughs> as well. And you take a look last year. Bellbrook win, won this game 42-35. to 35. I had the privilege of doing the game in Bellbrook last year with the late Aaron Matthews and uh, just had a fantastic time with Aaron and uh, always remember those memories. So uh, let's, let's do a good one for him tonight, partner. You got it. <laughs> so Wapakoneta will kick off, and they will kick off to Bellbrook. Bellbrook comes out on the field. They are led by number seven quarterback Luke Benitez. He is 50 of 97 this year for 629 yards, 10 touchdowns, and two interceptions. He takes care of the ball well, and he is efficient, Scott. Yeah, no question about it. Look out for Elijah Brooks. <laughs> he, uh, he is fantastic. I mean, he yeah, he, he is going to be a load for that Wapakoneta defense. Beautiful weather tonight, 67 degrees, 12-mile-an-hour winds, and uh, who would have thought about it for the second round of the state playoffs here in early November. So yeah, it, feel, it feels like, uh, you know, early in the season. Yeah, there's handoff to Elijah Brooks. You take a look at Brooks's numbers, Scott, and they are mind-boggling. 206 attempts, which you know he's the workhorse. 1,403 yards, 19 touchdowns. Scott, he averages 6.8 yards a carry. What I'm saying is every other time you give him the ball, it's first down. <laughs> yeah, no question about it. 19 touchdowns. I mean, that's that's that's, <laughs> that's insane that through is. 11 games. <laughs> so here's Benitez. He's got two behind him. He's got one to the right, and he's got a man in motion. He's going to hand off to Williams again off the right side or left side, excuse me, and Wapakonet is all over that. Do a great job of just bottling Brooks up. And they stop him for a gain of about nothing, and that'll bring up third down. Yeah, it looks like number 57, Jaden Rampula in there on that tackle. Junior, 5'10", 200 pounds, outside linebacker. Wapakoneta has won 10 games in a row since that opening week loss to Marion Local. 
They won the WBL, and they had the, I call it, the game of the year against Van Wert with the block punt, which will go down in infamy. is one of the greatest high school games in, in Northwest Ohio, in my opinion. So here comes Benitez. He's got Brooks behind him. He's going to fake the hand. He's going to throw off to the right side. And, and he targeted Brooks on a little screen pass, and he overshoots him. And that's going to bring up fourth down, and Wapakoneta is going to get the ball right back. Yeah, Benitez is a pretty good passer. He's 50 of 97 on the year, 629 yards. Average is about 6.5 yards per attempt. Just throws the ball a little wide on that one. 1041 on our Lee's Famous Recipe score. Our school board is presented tonight by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wapak and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Home style happens here. So here's the punt. A booming punt goes across midfield. It was, I thought it was touched, but it was not touched. It'll go out of bounds at about the 45, 46 yard line. That's where Wapak and Edda will take over. And you had talked about it earlier, Scott, about the young freshman quarterback, and he is a dandy. He comes into the game. Uh, 75 or 133, 824 yards and six touchdowns. Now, they don't let him throw a lot because he also runs the ball. <laughs> yeah, well, he's, he's a, uh, a, a key third weapon in their offense. I really like him. I've watched him develop from the beginning of the year, uh, and then we had him in mid-year, and then I had him again uh, later in the year and now, and he is really developing quickly. I think he's a, a, a quarterback that is going to be a premier quarterback in our area for, obviously, three plus more years. This is Moyer as he hands the ball off to. And you know, it goes without being said, Danny, when you're, when you're talking about a coach's son yes. at quarterback, uh, there's that chemistry that you, the, that you have, but also living in a coach's yes. house, yep. you grow up with football and, you, and, that, and his football IQ is off the charts. Oh, absolutely. Uh, very rarely do you see a freshman at this level starting a varsity football game at a school the size of Wapakoneta. The size of Wapakoneta and the success of Wapakoneta. Absolutely. This is a good football team. Here's Moyer in the gun. He's going to hand the ball off to Jace Noss off the left side. Here comes Noss, and he goes to about the 50-yard line, and that's going to bring up a quick third down and about four. You mentioned Jace, uh, 1,285 yards rushing coming in. 6.5 per carry and 18 touchdowns. Averages 116 yards per game. He's a big piece of that offense. Absolutely. When they need the tough yards, <laughs> they go to Connor Mextrop, and uh, he is a, uh, I like to call him a banger because he just likes to bang into that defensive line. That'll bring up third and six. Moyers in the gun. He's got Jason Noss off to his right side. He's got a man in motion. He's got one to the right, one to the left. He's going to look around. He's going to roll to his right, looks downfield, and throws down the field. He's got a man open wide down the side. He's going to take it in for a Wapakoneta touchdown. Yeah, that's Grant Jolly, number 10, a junior. He ran a little wheel route. Defense didn't pick it up. That's his third touchdown on the year, and it's timely. Watch him sneak out on the right side, Scott, in a perfect strike. And that touchdowns are presented by Allen Davis Insurance, your solutions provider specializing in auto, home, business insurance, and more. Allen Davis is our touchdown sponsor. So what a way to start the game. Absolutely. And, and you know, you got to think those plays were scripted. Uh, but right. they ran it yeah. perfectly. They caught the defense napping and uh, made them pay. There's the kick for the extra point. It is up, and it is good. So with 10.33 to go, the Wapakoneta Redskins strike first. They take the early 7-0 lead. You're watching High School Sports right here on WOSN. Touchdowns are presented by Allen Davis Insurance, your solutions provider specializing in auto, home, business, insurance, and more. Allen Davis is our touchdown sponsor. So Wapakoneta strikes quick here in the first quarter, Scott, and a fantastic throw from Caleb Moyer to Grant Jolly and puts him on the board first. Deep kickoff and Bellbrook will bring it back out for their second possession of the night. Scott, we, if we look at some of the special teams in tonight's game, you look at Riley Farron from Bellbrook. He is four of eight on field goals. He had a long of 41 this year, but he's also 40 of 40 on extra points. And I was watching him kick tonight during warmups and he was booting him in from 50. Yeah, well, you yeah. know, first of all, he showed 0 for 1 from 50 plus yes. on the stats. Yeah. If you're trying 50 plus, <laughs> right. you probably so hit that in practice, that's right? A, so that's you, a great point, yeah. You know he's got a leg. That's right, that's a great point. This is 
Delbrook, they'll hand off again to Brooks on the left side as he tries to get around, and a great job of Wapakoneta. And they know where Elijah Brooks is at all times, Scott. Well, you know, if, if Coach Moyer has done a good job with the scouting report, which you know he has. Oh, absolutely. Uh, that's the focus of the defense. You're, you're probably going to spy him with at least one of your linebackers at all times Scott. and probably the outside or the wide side linebacker as well. Scott, I don't I don't know that Coach Travis Moyer gets enough credit for as good as he is. I mean, every year these guys get better and better and better. Here come the Bellbrook Golden Eagles again, trying to push the ball up the middle, and that is stopped immediately. And that Wapakoneta defensive front is absolutely owning the trenches right now. You've got number six in there, Connor Mextroth, who's just tearing it up in the middle. Yeah, you get a look at it here, and just a, a good job by the defensive front four for Wapak to plug the gaps. There was nowhere to go. Our replays are provided by Owl's Woods Diner in Wapak. Wapak's best place for pizza, wings, subs, and burgers. Call 419-738-9111. So this is Luke Benitez in the under center. He's going to fake the ball to Brooks, and he's going to roll to his left. He's going to try to get the corner. He gets across the 35, and he goes to about the 36. So a nice third down pickup. That will bring up a first down. And our first down sponsor tonight is Cook and Son Plumbing and Heating, specializing in old-time service since 1978. Find us on Facebook or call 419-738-8956. Yeah, you get a good look here. Number 45, Joey Truesdale, flows to the football, makes the tackle there. And Luke Benitez for Bellbrook, he is not shy about running. He will get out on the corners, and he is athletic enough that they'll allow him to create some, some space out there. And then there's a... Flags immediately. They was handing the ball off to Elijah Brooks. Yeah, and that call was made by the line judge over there, Ben Mock, our referee and crew tonight. In the white hat, the referee is Jeff Klaus. Mark Keller, as you see there, is the back judge. Brett Roberson is on one side of the field. Ben Mock's on the other, and then Damon Coverman uh, is the back judge. When Bellbrook does throw, they like to target number 15, Carson Lebanski. He has 22 receptions, Scott, for 299 yards and five touchdowns. So he is their go-to target in the air. Yeah, and I looked at him. He, he's everywhere. He punts, yes, he, he kicks, yes, right. he, he's a receiver, he <laughs> he's, uh, returns punts. He, he's a key cog in their wheel. So here's Brooks again, and he has taken down. Oh, he gets loose, and he almost lost a yard or two, but he gets back to almost the original line of scrimmage. And the one thing, Scott, about Bellbrook, they're not going to go away from the run. That's their bread and butter uh, up down or indifferent they're going to stay with the run yeah no no doubt um, that that's what they do that's what they that's what got them here yes so they're going to stick with it number 64 Caden Ware on that last tackle he was in on the tackle on the previous play as well I, I, I neglected to call his number nice job out there at defensive end so here come the Bellbrook Golden Eagles Benitez is under center he's going to hand the ball off to the second man through and that was number, let's see if we can get a number, number 20 for Bellbrook. And that is Sam Barhorst, the senior. Yeah, and again, if you uh, keep your eye on 64 on this replay at the right defensive end, he's really responsible for blowing this play up early. Uh, allowed uh, the other guys to get in there and make the tackle for a loss. And right now, it is a clear advantage to Wapakoneta's defensive line against the Bellbrook offensive line. Yeah, let's give them some props. The defensive line tackle Tyler Hauser, nose is Jaden Rampula, and is Mikey Lee in the other end. Uh, I just talked about Caden Ware. So here's Benitez under center. He's going to fake the handoff to Brooks. He's going to roll off to his left. He's looking downfield. He's get hit, he's hit hard, and it's, it's picked, picked off. And it's down the left side, and he's taken out of bounds. Number five for the Skins, Nate Metzger, the junior defensive back, picks it off and takes it back to the 30-yard line. Well, and I was watching the secondary. They're in a nickel package. They got five of them back there, and he, Benitez had nobody open. He just throws the ball up there, I think, uh, kind of for grabs. And a great job on reading the play, playing center field by Nate Metzger. <laughs> I was say, that's exactly what I was going to say, Scott. The old cliche, he was playing center field, and he sure was. So here come the skins as they try to tack on another score with a turnover. And I said he got to the 30, and he must have stepped out of bounds around the 40-yard line. So he's at about the 41-yard line. So here's Moyer in the gun. He's got Jace Nowis off to his right. He's got Jolly split clear out to the right, and he's got Mextroth in motion. He's going to hand the ball off to Jace Nowis, and he has taken down. Submarine, if you might. Yeah, Nowis uh, 
good job just to get that back to the line of scrimmage. He had to avoid two guys. Luke Cosens, the senior for Bellbrook, comes in and kind of submarines him. And you watch right here, does a great, nice job by Cosens there. You know, and last year when, when Wapakoneta played at Bellbrook, we had similar weather to tonight, just beautiful skies and a night light breeze and uh, just didn't go Wapakoneta's way. So you know these kids are fired up. So here's Moyer. He's got two to the right, two to the left, and a man in motion. He's going to fire the ball out to the side, off to the left side. He's got his man out there. That's number 85 on the reception. That's Grant Hauser, the 6'5 tight end. And, uh, boy, he's tough to cover in, the, uh, in a tight area, 6'5". Yeah, and again, I really like this play. You see a lot of teams do it, a quick bubble screen, get your athlete outside, get them into space, and let them see what they can do. That's going to bring up third and four, Scott, on the 35-yard line, 4.52 to go on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. Here's Moyer in the gun. He's got Jace Noss off to the right. Grant Hauser averages 23 yards per catch. That's, that's, a pretty, that's amazing. That, that's a nice uh, little tool to have. Yeah, we got athletes all over the field. Now they move Noss off to Moyer's left, and they're going to take a timeout. Our timeouts are sponsored by Binkley Real Estate with an efficient sales approach, effective marketing, and extensive network that will get you the results that move you. So we're going to take a break on the field. We'll take a break here in the booth. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Replays are provided by Al's Woods Diner in Wapakoneta. Wapakoneta's best place for pizza, wings, subs, and burgers. Call 419-738-9111. An important fact tonight, it's pajama night. That's I don't know if you knew that. For <laughs> Wapak, everybody shows up in their pajamas. <laughs> Here's Chase Nows off the left side, taken down by big number 71 for the Golden Eagles. That is Alex Flora, Jr. See him come in and make a nice play on Jace Nouse. And look, Jace Nouse and Connor Mextrop are tough to bring down. They are tough backs. Yeah, they are. But good patience there. He was waiting for something to develop. It really didn't happen, but Luke Cosens was there for Bellbrook on the play. Scott, this is an absolutely beautiful facility to do a game in and we've got a huge crowd on the home side and a nice crowd on the uh, visitor side and now there, there's a lot of seating here so it may not look like there's a lot of visitors but there's there's a lot of people over there yeah, absolutely there's the field goal attempt up and it is good are you kidding me from 50 plus he knocks it through to give the Wapakoneta Redskins the 10 nothing lead. That was from 51 yards. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. You know, there's a good chance you're going to see him somewhere on Saturday afternoons in the future when, when you're kicking 50-plus yard Just field goals absolutely. in high school. And he that's incredible. And it was not a barely just get Scott, over the that's, bar. That, that's good from 55, 60. That's, that's amazing. And here we were talking about the young man from Bellbrook, Riley Farron. And my goodness. Well, well, he's, he's, he's one for two now that's from right, 50. That's right. <laughs> Boy, things like that, I'm telling you. you know, that's high school that, sports. Yeah, that's exciting because, you know, I'm excited not only for – for Wapakoneta, the team there, that but but that's exciting for him. Oh, you know, absolutely! Because uh, you know I've seen kickers on on Sunday afternoons out here by themselves, sure. kicking two or three balls and then chasing them and and you know really working on their craft and and they don't get a lot of opportunity to to, to show it off and and he certainly does right there and so all that hard work, all that personal time he put in to develop is uh, is shown right here in a big Kyle game. Kyle Beach. And you look at his kickoff, Scott. Yeah. He's just booming him through the end yeah. zone. And, and let's be clear, a yard in college and, and, and in the pros is a yard in high school, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. So, I mean, when you're putting him out of the end zone or close to it, uh, you know, it's just impressive. So number nine, Kyle Beach, the junior place kicker, just knocked one in from 50. I, I'm just yeah. stunned. Yeah. I, I mean, Mark it down. you just don't see it a lot, Scott. Yeah. And, and it's amazing in a, in a, in a playoff game. That's a, that's a huge weapon. Well, and that's another thing. You know, you talk about uh, a lot of kickers. you got to have mental toughness, right? you got to yeah. be able to deal with the pressure of the situation. It's early in this game, not a ton of pressure, sure. but it's playoffs. Absolutely. And he knocked it through. And, and nonetheless, it was also on a turnover. So there's points off of a turnover. Yeah. So here comes Benitez as he's going to hand off to number 12. And that is Tanner Killen, and he has taken down, just taken down behind the line of scrimmage by the Wapakoneta defense. Yeah, that was Tyler Hauser, number 54. 
watch Tyler Hauser come to no, he didn't come through, nobody touched him. Right. Nobody touches him. These kids are fired up, Scott. They are really playing well right now. Well, what's interesting is I went through the defensive uh, stats, looking at players who stand out. Usually you have one or two players with yep. that, that leads the, the team in tackles by far. Wapakoneta very evenly distributed. They play defense truly as a team. Oh, absolutely. Here comes Benitez. He swings it out to his man on the left side. Gets up to about the 25-yard line. That's number 12, Tanner Killen. We talked about him earlier tonight. And that's going to bring up a third down. And we'll have to get a measure on that, see where we're at on third down. That'll be third and five on the 25-yard line. And you see what they're doing, Scott. They're having zero success going up the middle. So these are extensions of a handoff, trying to get to the outside, trying to figure out that Wapakoneta defense. Yeah, and for uh, Tanner Killen, that was only his seventh reception on the year. Uh, has had a couple big plays, averages 23 yards a carry, but not a lot of throws coming his way. He responds with that one. So here comes Benitez. He's under center. He's got Brooks directly behind him. And they are going to take a timeout to talk about third and five. So with 2.31 to go, the Wapakoneta Redskins lead 10 to nothing here on WOSN. Timeouts are sponsored by Binkley Real Estate with an efficient sales approach, effective marketing campaigns, and extensive network that will get you the results that move you. Binkley Real Estate is our timeout sponsor. <coughs> Excuse me. So here we go, third and five on the 25-yard line. Benitez is in the gun. He's got a man in motion, and he's got Brooks off to his left. He's going to hand the ball to Brooks. He goes up the middle, and he is taken down. He is going to be short of a first down, Scott. And now it is fourth and just a few inches, it appears to me, from the 29-yard line. And you just wonder, with the momentum all whopping at his way, if they won't try to go for it here. Let's see what they – and they're going to huddle up, and they are exactly doing what I just said. Yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see if they actually snap the football. Sure. They, they yes. may try to right. draw Wapak off sides here, so you got to be careful with the hard count. But if not, look for Elijah Brooks. They and there's take it. Benitez, and, here's a, and, yeah. there, and there was a man that wasn't set on the play. And, yeah, our first call sponsor tonight is Silver Shears Salon and Spa, offering a full-service salon with experienced stylists and top products. Visit them on Blackcliff Street in Wapak, Facebook, or SilverShearsSalonAndSpa.com. Yeah, you can see one of the uh, backfield, in the backfield, one of the running backs was not fully set. Well, you just wondered when they ran to the line if they weren't going to try to quick snap it. Yeah. So here Wapakoneta is going to get a great chance at really good field position as the Bellbrook punter stands at the 10-yard line, and they're coming after this one. They've got uh, seven men on the line of scrimmage, so they are going to come hard for this one as they've got him backed up to about the 9-yard line. Get the snap back, and number 52 had an opportunity but held up, and a fair catch is made by number 10 for Wapakoneta. That's Grant Jolly, and that puts them in about the 48-yard line. That's where they'll take over with 147 to go on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. So 10 to nothing, Scott, in a big game like this. If Wapakoneta can punch in uh, uh, any points right now, that would be huge. Yeah, no question. They have the momentum. Yes. Uh, this is the third time with great field position to start their offensive, uh, you know, series. And so let's see what happens here. And, and you look, Scott, Bellbrook only gives up 13 points a game, and they play a really tough schedule. They play the greater Dayton area, so they play really good teams. Yeah, we mentioned that as one of the keys to the game is that uh, this offense has got to have some big strikes in it against that Bellbrook defense. And they had one in the first series with Grant Jolly on that touchdown throw. So there's Connor Mextroff as he takes it up the middle for a gain of about three yards, four yards, excuse me. So that'll make it second and six. And Connor Mextroff is just a big, big kid to bring down when he gets the ball. 6'2", 210 pounds. What a great, great view I, from yeah, our replay. I know. I, was I, mean, just, yeah. I felt like I was in on the play right there. <laughs> but uh, you talked about it at the top, you yes. know, smash mouth football, and that play right there was exactly that. So here's Caleb Moyer in the gun. He's got Connor Mextroff off to his left. He's got two to the left, one to the right. Moyer's going to keep it himself. Tries to go across the left side. He gets a cross for a gain of about two yards, maybe. It's going to bring up third and four from just across midfield. Yeah, not really much there. Good job by the Bellbrook front four, plugging all the gaps. That's big number 71 for Bellbrook. That is Alex Flora. We talked about him earlier. 
Floria, excuse me. I heard the PA announcer call him the correct name. So here comes Moyer. He's got two to the left, two to the right, and he's got a single set back in the backfield. He's going to keep it himself. He's looking across the middle. He's going to throw deep down the right side. He's got Jace Naus out there oh. and just overshoots Naus, and Naus is frustrated with himself, and he was wide open, Scott. Yeah, he was. It was just slightly overthrown, but I, I said this before. As a quarterback, you, if you're going to miss, you want to miss to the outside, you want to miss long because the defensive players, the, the secondary, are always on the inside and short. So uh, good placement by Moyer. I like the throw. I, do, yeah, I, I, I yes. like the way it was executed. It was just a little bit long. Absolutely. So here comes the human highlight film, Kyle Beach, to punt the ball away. And uh, I love watching this young man kick, punt, or whatever else he does. He's standing at the 40-yard line. So he gets the ball up in the air, and they – Good kick that's going to bounce at about the 15-yard line. And it goes down. Are you kidding me? It's going to go to the one-yard line. Did they get it or did they go into the end zone? They're going to call it a touchback. The ball went into the end zone. Yeah, I think uh, I think he was okay if he would have just touched it. Right, but he right. recovered the ball and slid into yeah, yeah. the end zone, which I think uh, results in a touchback. You, yep. see the, you see the beanie. Damon yeah. Coverman there yeah. will toss the beanie into the end zone, which says touchback. Touchback. Damon Coverman's everywhere. <laughs> yeah. He is everywhere. He's been doing this for a while. Yeah. See, this whole crew is They're excellent crew. They are. Good I, guys. I referee basketball games with everybody on this crew. Um, and they're all they're they're all committed to high school sports and being being really good at what they do. So with 13 seconds to go, they'll take the ball at the 20-yard line, first and 10. Benitez under center. He's going to swing the ball back to Brooks. He gets a little wiggle room, and that's his best gain of the night, Scott, for about five yards. Yeah, and if you're Bell Brook, you want to get him started. We, they they, they want to see a little production out of him, move the football here. They have had no success on their first three series, and they're going to take a timeout. So that's going to do it for the end of the first quarter. At the end of the first quarter, the Wapakoneta Redskins lead 10 to nothing. You're watching high school football right here on WSN. Welcome back to Wapakoneta High School. Our scoreboard is presented tonight by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wapakoneta and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. So here comes Benitez and the Eagles as they have second and third on the 27. He's going to hand the ball up to the first man, and he's going to go across the 30-yard line, and he's really close to a first down. He's going to be about a yard short, Scott. Number 48, Tanner Stewart with the carry. That's his first carry of the night. They'll, carry, they'll, they'll give the ball to him every so often, but the lead back, as we've talked already extensively and exclusively about tonight, is Elijah Brooks, and they do want to get him on track. Yeah, Tanner Stewart has 65 carries coming in, 615 yards, averages 9.5 per carry. It's a, great, it's a great year for people. Yeah, <laughs> four, four touchdowns, excellent running back, great here's, tandem. Here's Brooks as he goes across the first down marker, and he gets about four yards, and that will be another Cook and Son first down. Cook and Son Plumbing and Heating, specializing in old-time service since 1978. Find us on Facebook or call 419-738-8956. So here you see Brooks go across and gets a little bit of a seam and picks up four to five yards. And that, his last two carries have been six and four yards, so he, maybe he's getting on track. Well, I think uh, Coach Jeff Jenkins for Bellbrook re has recognized he's got to mix it up a little bit. You can see here they're kind of alternating between the two backs back there and it's being successful. They picked up one first down, they're close to another. And there's Tanner Stewart with a carry of about nine yards. So that's gonna bring up third and one. So Bellbrook starting to get that running game going and really at 10 to nothing, they're exclusively right in there. Yeah, and, and, and you know, if they can manufacture a score, they're right back in this sure. game. And, and, and you know, we talked about at the top of the game, coaches that can make adjustments to sure. shift momentum. Absolutely. Clearly Wapak had the momentum early and, 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 you know, Bellbrook wants to take that away from him. Here comes Bellbrook again. They'll hand the ball up to the first man. That's number 20 again. That's Sam Barhorst as he carries the ball up the middle. That'll get them another Cook and Son first down. Yeah, Sam Barhorst, is, uh, that was his 19th carry. He says 70 yards, averages 3.8 per carry. And I think, uh, you know, uh, Coach is trying to mix it up a little bit. 
so the defense can't just focus on Elijah Brooks. Here comes Elijah Brooks as he goes off to the right side, and he's got a seam. He's down the right side, and he gets to about the 35-yard line, so that is Elijah Brooks' best carry of the night, and Bell Brooks got something cooking in the kitchen. Yeah, and I think that's what happens. You you, you take the focus off Brooks, and, yes. you, and now you've got, to, you've got to play all three in the backfield, and then when Brooks finds a seam, he makes you pay for it well, here. You know he's got 19 touchdowns. Right, so. right. And look, you got 1,400 out of him and 600 out of the uh, out of Tanner. That's 2,000 yards for this team. That's right. That's, that's some 11 really games, good bag. that's a lot of that, rushing. That is absolutely right. So they are not out of this game by a long shot. So here come the Bellbrook Eagles. First and 10 on the 34-yard line. This is Benitez under center. He swings it back to Brooks, goes across the 35, and that's where he'll be taken down by big number 54 for the Skins. That's Tyler Hauser, and Tyler Hauser is a house, and he's everywhere. Yeah, number one on the outside, too, uh, Logan Crow. Scott, they, th this is something. It's almost like the immovable object and the unstoppable force. You look at the number of yards the kids from Bellbrook have put up, and you notice that Wapakoneta has only allowed 10 rushing touchdowns this year. Yeah, and, and you know, on that play, that last play, number 22, linebacker Corbin Mitchell read that play and reacted super quick and occupied the blocker that would have allowed Eliza Brooks to get outside so instead it was a short game. Here's Brooks again as he goes to about the 30-yard line for a gain of maybe, maybe two yards. Yeah, and do you see what they're doing, Scott? They're putting him in different formations. They're still getting him the ball, but they're doing it in different sets. Right. But I think, uh, and, and you want to get him to the outside, which is what they're trying to do too. Last two plays, right side, left side, oh, where he can get some space. But I really think the successful uh, recipe here so far in this drive is to mix it up a little bit. I, I, I completely agree. That's a great call, Scott. And, and what you, you said it best earlier, take the focus off Brooks and then hit him later. And, right. and I like the recipe. So here come the Eagles. Benitez is under center. He's going to swing it back to Elijah Brooks as he tries to get around the 30. And great tackling by Wapakoneta. Just an unbelievable job led by big number 57, Jaden Rampula, as he comes in out of nowhere and makes a tackle. Yeah, the linebackers for Wapak are doing a great job of pursuing and great angles they're taking. There's nothing out there. As you can see, three red jerseys meet Elijah Brooks. Right about the line of scrimmage, he's got nowhere, nothing to go. Scott, I've had Wapakoneta quite a few times this year. They look faster tonight than I've ever seen them look. I mean, I know it's turf, and I, but just think about it. This is the 12th game they've played this year. These yeah. kids look like it's game number one. They look fresh and ready to go. Well, you know, you, you get in game shape, and, and as the season progresses, and it's a beautiful night, the weather is perfect, so here we know, go. footing Four. is good. So here we go, fourth and nine, and Bellbrook's going to take a timeout. So it's 7.45 to go here in the second quarter until halftime. The Wapakoneta Redskins lead 10 to nothing right here on WOSN. Tonight's Red Zone sponsor is IC Signs. They've entered the IC Signs Red Zone. IC Signs Wapakoneta is the home of the business startup package. We are local, fast, and friendly. Check us out at icsigns.net. So there goes the fourth down play, and they are short on that pass. So the ball goes back to Wapakoneta. So a great defensive stance. It was a bend, but don't break, Scott. Yeah, and you, number 10, Grant Jolly back there doing a great job in coverage. You can see Benitez trying to get trying to get a comeback route there, and Jolly, number 10, is right there. Scott, are you surprised the way it's they Jolly ran the, the ball? Jolly on the spot. <laughs> huh? That's, you're, Sorry. Such, you're such a dad. <laughs> Are you surprised uh, that Bellbrook threw the ball there, Scott? Well, uh, yeah, I am, uh, especially when you got your, your breadwinner in the sure. backfield yeah. with Elijah Brooks. But, uh, you know, you, you, you're going to have to mix it up. They have to. Now, this series, Bellbrook had some success. They, they moved yeah. the football. So Absolutely. there's a little bit of a spark there. So here's Connor Mextroth as they pitch the ball back. And he just puts his head down and barrels across the 40 for a gain of about six yards. Boy, when you see him coming at you, Scott, you better get low to the ground. Yeah, and it looked to me like number nine, uh, Eldon Kerber, he, he says, <laughs> he didn't want no uh, part of that. He says uh, <laughs> this guy looks like a bull coming at me. I'm not going to I'm not going to try to match. So, so he kind of he does the uh, ole and arm tackle. That'll bring up second and two from the 40 yard line. Moyer hands the ball off to Mextra and he picks up another Cook and Son first down. So Connor Mextroth goes across and gets another first down. He is getting the bulk of the carries right now. 
Now, look, th there's no secret here in football. The farther you go, if you can run the ball and you can stop the run, and right now that's what Wapakoneta is doing, and you're going to win a lot of football games doing that. Yeah, especially in the playoffs because typically, now we, we're fortunate tonight, but typically there's weather now. Yes, starts right, to happen, right, 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 right. Which impacts the throwing game. You've Absolutely. Got, you got rain, you got snow, you got ice, you got wind, whatever. Now, tonight it's a beautiful night. Yeah. Here's Jace Naus off the left side, and he goes in for about five yards and a nice run for Jace Naus. And they are just mixing it up right now and just bull running right now. Well, that was just great patience by Jace. It was. You're right. He took the handoff. He kind of waits here for the block to develop, slides over, finds the seam, and picks up about five, five and a half yards. And he's stopped by big number nine, Eldon Korber, the senior defensive tackle. So we are at midfield for the Wapakoneta Redskins with 6.13 to go. Moyers under center. He's going to pitch the ball back to Max Stroth as he goes across the 45-yard line, and he takes with him three Golden Eagles. And I want to give the Wapak offensive line some credit here as you, as you get a good look at them and shifting on the defense there. But uh, they are doing an excellent job for these running backs tonight. Tackle number 50, Ryan Price. Guard number 70, Jacob Kirkpatrick. Center, Grant Childress. He's number 53. Guards number 56, Nate Schneider. And on the other side, number 54, tackle Tyler Hauser. And then tight end Grant Hauser is in there as well. So you got the Hauser boys right next to each other. So here we go, another cooking sun first down. Mextroth is in motion. They're going to hand the ball to Jace Nows, and he's taken down right at the line of scrimmage. And that'll be a gain of about nothing. What a great look you have here. Just good penetration. So I, I said to <laughs> I said to my wife, Scott, before I left for the game, I said, this could be a quick one tonight because nobody passes the ball much on these two offenses. Yeah, they and don't. That and that clock continues to run. Yes, it does. Good tackle by number 40, Jacob Umina. That last so there one. was Jolly in motion, and they're going to get a false start against the Wapakonet offensive line, just as you praise them, Scott. <laughs> the well, kiss of death. And, and I feel like that whatever that pink thing is that's laying out there on the field, it's, right. it's, it's bothering me because about four guys have almost stepped on it. I feel like they're going to slip or slide, but, <laughs> but nobody's picking it up. I was going to say, nobody's noticed it, but it's right there in the yeah. middle of our camera shot. So... Uh, well, it's funny. My, when my son was in high school, he had a sleeve torn off yes. uh, of his jersey, and it laid in the middle of the field for, from like the second quarter until the end of the game. <laughs> no one picked it up. I just, you know. <laughs> so here comes Moyer. So we'll he, see how long this lays. He's in the gun. He's got Jace Noss off to his right. He's going to get a little screen pass out to Noss. He's got blockers in front of him. Here goes Noss to the 40, to the 35, to the 30. He takes it out to the 25, and he's taken out of bounds by number nine. That's Eldon Korber for the Melbrook Golden Eagles. Oh, big gain from Caleb Moyer to Jace Noss. Perfectly set up, Scott. Well, Jace is their fourth leading receiver. He comes in with 133 yards, averages 6.5, and has two touchdowns. And he knows how to catch the football, and then he knows how to run the football after he does. So a perfectly executed play, because as soon as he got the ball, he had blockers out there in front of him, and that's going to put a first and 10 at the 23. That's another Cook and Son first down. So here comes Moyer under center. He's got Connor Mextroth in the backfield. He's handing off to Mextroth, and he's going to be met head on by number 71 for the Golden Eagles, and that's Alex Floria. Wapak's running backs are big. Yeah, they sure are. They've got size, and you can see they're strong. They meet the defenders and always go forward. You know they've spent time in the squat rack. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean. <laughs> a lot of time in the weight room. Absolutely. Second and eight from the 21. They are knocking on the red zone here. So here's Moyer. He's going to go under center. He's got Kenner, Connor Mextroth behind him. He's also got number 13 in yep. the backfield. Moyer's going to roll to his left, and he is going to be taken down in a big loss as he is taken down back by the 30-yard line and uh, really should have got rid of the ball there. Yeah, he's got to get out here quicker. He was kind of uh, not not going full speed. He's got to tuck the ball and sprint to get out to the edge first and then look to throw the football after he gets out there. Number three, Connor Pund for Bellbrook was in on the tackle, read that play all the way. And he had Jeffrey Kohler, number 13, in the backfield with him, and I thought Kohler was going to lead him on the block, but he did not. Well, and I like number seven out there, Jordan Schneider for Wapak. Yes. It looked to me like he might might be open as well. So, so that's going to bring up third and a long 16 for Moyer. 
He's got Mextroth in the backfield. He's going to roll to his right, and he looks downfield. He's going to throw across the field to number 21 to Mextroth, and that's going to be short of a first down. But you just wonder if they're going to go for it here, if they're going to put Kyle Beach out there to tackle on another three. Well, it's just a chip shot for Beach at this Absolutely. point. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> but again, a really nice catch there by Jason House. So that's going to bring up fourth and 12, and Coach Moyer is going to send out the offensive unit. You get a good look here from the uh, end zone camera at the Wapakoneta huddle. So let's see what they and, do. And here. I think you're right. I think they're going to go for it here. Fourth and 12? Fourth and 11, excuse me, on the 24 yard line. Moyer's in the gun. He's got Mextroth off Look to his Jolly. left. Look for Jolly. Moyer looks across. He's going to throw to the end zone to the right side, and he's going to overshoot his man. And he was intended for Jace now, so that's going to turn the ball back to the Bellbrook Golden Eagles. And, and really not, not a bad play right there. You've got them backed up with 531 to go. Your defense has played fantastic. Yeah, I'm just uh, sort of surprised at the play call. He ended yeah. up with two receivers basically in a five-foot radius, which is a little bit unusual. I'm not sure if there was a miscommunication there or something. Um, Maybe somebody run the wrong pattern. Yeah, yeah but again, uh, you know, with Kyle Beach back there, that would have been about a 30-yard field goal. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's three more points on the board. So I'm not questioning Travis Moyer, oh, no, 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 no question, no. Um, because his credentials uh, speak for themselves. Here comes Brooks again as they – Swing it back, and he is taken down by big number 57, Jaden Rampula. The he's defensive lineman just outruns everybody. <laughs> he's been everywhere tonight. And, you know, I, I do want to, when you talk about Travis Moyer's credentials, he's looking for his 200th Absolutely. career high school yes. win tonight. Uh, you mentioned he was at Bucyrus Winford yes. before. Put them on the map, according oh, to a buddy of mine yes. who I talked today. 118 and 28 there in 13 seasons. He's now 81 and 20 at Wapak in his ninth season. Here's Benitez. He looks across the field. He's under heavy pressure. He tries to roll to his right side and he goes out of bounds. And guess who? Big number 57 again on the run. Well, Benitez has got speed. He's got wheels. Well, so's Jaden Rampula. <laughs> he, uh, absolutely. That's what I'm saying. He was he was stride for stride with him. Oh my goodness. <laughs> So that'll bring up third and seven from the 27. So a really big third down here, Scott, with 5.31 to go. And you just wonder uh, what they're thinking right now on third and seven. Well, Bellbrook got the stop. They got the football back. Now they got to do something with it. It's third and about eight. So here's Benitez. He's under center. He's going to look across the field. He's got plenty of time. He throws long across the field. He's got a man out there, and he overshoots him, his intended target. Yeah, and I like number one, Logan Crow, out there on the uh, on the coverage. Great job. His intended target, number 12, Tanner Killen, and he just overshoots him. That'll bring up a punting situation. That'll put Wapakoneta back about the 35-yard line. They'll send back number eight, Will Campbell. Under heavy pressure, and they just about got the punt. And it's going to hit about the 42-yard line. And it's going to take a Bellbrook bounce, and it's going to roll all the way down to the 10-yard line, to the 9, to the 8-yard line. So a fantastic job of pinning Wapakoneta deep. Yeah, field position, time of possession, et cetera. We talked about that at the top of the game. Special teams play, execution. Great job by Bellbrook there. Pin Wapakoneta inside their own 10. So with 56 seconds left on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard here until halftime, Wapakoneta leads 10 to nothing. They'll go first and 10 from the nine yard line. And being back this deep, Scott, I would assume they're going to be a little conservative with the ball and the time on the clock. Yeah, you would assume that at this point. Uh, although if you can get a couple big plays, get it up to, you <laughs> yeah, know. They've surprised me before. You, you may yeah. want to take a, take, make a field goal attempt at the end of the half. And they're just going to take a knee. So they're going to play it smart here. And they'll take a knee. So a really quick first half here as the Wapakoneta Redskins have struck twice. A big touchdown strike from Caleb Moyer to Grant Jolly, and then the big leg of Kyle Beach adds on three. Yeah, and both of those plays were exciting. They were, own, they really in, were. In their own regard. Absolutely. 
So Moyer's under center. He's going to take another snap, and he'll take a knee, and that will do it. So after one half of football in the second round of the Ohio High School State playoffs, the Wapakoneta Redskins lead the Bellbrook Golden Eagles from Wapakoneta High School 10 to nothing. You're watching high school football right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Wapakoneta High School. Our halftime adjustments are presented by Silver Shears Salon and Spa, offering a full-service salon with experienced stylists and top products. Visit them on Black Hope Street in Wapak, Facebook, or SilverShearsSalonAndSpa.com. So the Wapakoneta Redskins, Scott, lead 10 to nothing. Let's take a look at our halftime adjustments. Yeah, I think if it, it, first I'll talk about Wapak. Sure. Wapak's really only had two big plays. They had the, the touchdown pass to Grant Jolly, which put up seven, and then we had a really long field goal. Both of those plays were exciting, but generally speaking, they haven't had a whole lot of success yet offensively. Sure. Defense has kept them in the game. Um, so I, I think for them to expand, they, they're going to have to mix it up a little bit. They're going to have to do some things offensively, maybe throw the football. From a Bell Book pers uh, perspective, I think they continue to mix it up in the running backs. Uh, obviously, Wapak's defense focused on Elijah Brooks. They've done a good job with him. But Wapak only has 27 yards of rushing. I was just going to say, if, if yes. you told me at halftime it was 27 yards rushing, they'd be ahead 10 to nothing, but not knowing the big play that they produced and the Kyle Beach 51-yard field goal. Right. So they, they – uh, you know, they've, they've got to get some success there. Their line play is going to have to uh, expand a little bit uh, as we move into the second half. And then for Bellbrook, I think if they mix it up and then throw in that occasional Elijah run, uh, I think that was working for them. That's a good recipe. They're only down 10 points, two scores with a lot of football left to play. Yeah, but he, he's a, we talked about it earlier. He's a 1,400-yard back. He's going to get loose sometime right. tonight. I do want to uh, point out one thing tonight. I was sure. told at halftime that this is the 1,000th football game in Wapakoneta football history. Oh so it's a big milestone. If Coach Moyer can win, it would be his 200th 200, 200 win. Yeah. So there's uh, a lot of milestones tonight, and uh, we're excited to be a part of it, no question Absolutely. about it. So the Wapakoneta Redskins lead 10 to nothing. They'll take the second half kickoff here. We continue to have beautiful weather here for our second round playoff game and we were uh, checking out the WSN app at halftime looking at all the scores and uh, everybody in the booth was looking at the WSN app so uh, yeah great. some uh, exciting scores out there, there we, don't, yeah. we don't want to spoil it no no no, anything, no 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 but no, uh, absolutely not you know and of course we're on a delay here so wouldn't be spoiling anything anyway absolutely. but yeah. absolutely looking for the perfect gift for an out-of-town sports fan WSN can now be streamed anywhere in the world online on Roku and Apple TV for a $100 annual donation. Give the gift of hometown sports for the holidays. Sign up on app.wsn.tv or by downloading our Roku and Apple TV apps. Hey, that's a great holiday gift. My son lives up in Maine. I may have to do that for him. He, he, he loves to check out the high school scene. Hey, we got the twirling Christmas trees. I saw it's that. A, we're already in the Christmas <laughs> spirit. It's the holiday season. <laughs> So a little squib kick up the middle, and that's going to be picked up by the up man, and he'll bring it up to the about the 32-yard line. So Wapakoneta has a great field position to start the second half. Again. Yeah, and that's uh, number 10, Grant Jolly. He's a pretty dangerous guy on the kick returns. You know, between him and Jace now, so on kickoff returns, they average right around 20 yards per return. And do, so. you, do you think our director, Ben Reif, knew that Jolly was going to get the kickoff and he does the Christmas app there? Well, you know, he's <laughs> – He's he's special. He's I'm really you, good. He's Clairvoyant. He is. <laughs> so here's Caleb Moyer in the gun. He's got Jace Nouse off to his right. He's going to hand him all the Nouse, and he's going to pick up maybe a yard, and he is really shot down by that uh, Bellbrook defensive front. Big number 71 on the stop. Yeah, that's Alex Floria. Alex he's Floria. a junior. Boy, he is he's really good. He's a big good. dude. Yeah, he's really good. Takes it out to the 27 yards rushing. I'm just really shocked by that. They, they seem to move the ball, but you're right. It was two big plays. Yeah, it was two really big plays, and, uh, and, and that's got the 10 points on the board. That's why I was really concerned when they didn't kick the field goal yes, in yes. the second quarter. Yep. So here's Nas again as he gets loose on the right side. He cuts it back, and he's going to be close. He's going to be real close to a cooking sun first down. Yeah, I think he's going to be marked just a little bit short. It's be less than a yard. Brings like uh, Brett Roberson and uh, 
Ben Mock got it marked a little bit short there. On the Lee's famous recipe scoreboard, they're calling it third and one from the 41. So yeah. I agree with you. That looks a little bit shorter than a yard. So. Well, it's hard to tell because Mock's got big feet. And, <laughs> you know, I don't know if him and Roberson were lined up. But so here's Moyer. He's going to go under center. He's going to hand the ball off to next drop. He goes off the right side, and he's going to pick up a nice first down. And he just about got loose. He was taken down by number nine there for the Bellbrook Eagles. And that's Eldon Corber. We've called his name quite a bit tonight. You see him come off that right tackle. And boy, he just about got loose. Yeah, and I think that was number five for Bellbrook. Number five, Brooke. excuse uh, me. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that was yeah. Uh, Johnny, Johnny Dez. Dez. Yeah, Johnny Dez. And I like that name. You know, I wish he'd make some more tackles. <laughs> but, um, um, you know, again, Bellbrook doing a really good job of closing. You think Wapak's going to have a big run there, and they really yeah. shut it down pretty quickly. So here's Moyers. He's in the gun, and they're going to call timeout. So our first timeout here of the second half comes at the 10-18 mark. Wapakoneta leads 10 to nothing right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Wapakoneta High School. Timeouts are sponsored by Binkley Real Estate with an efficient sales approach, effective marketing campaigns, and extensive network that will get you the results that move you. Binkley Real Estate is our timeout sponsor. So, you know, we haven't talked a lot about Jacob Humana for Bellbrook. He's their leading tackler. He's got 91 total tackles, and we haven't called his name a lot tonight. No, we haven't. I think we called him one time yes, in the yeah. first quarter, and that's about it. Here comes Mouse off the left side, and almost a little forward pitch. I like that play, and they come out of a I love when they come out of a timeout and come out with a play like that. And that is a great play call. Again, yeah, I think that will be considered a pass yes, play yes, because I he do. did pass it forward, but that's a live football. You can see there, and I like the play. And there was nobody out there. The linebackers had taken off to the other side. They had to follow the man in motion, and he's wide open out yeah, there. Yeah, they cleared the receivers and gave him a little room outside. I do like that play call. You're right. So that'll bring up first and 10 on the 45 with 9.55 to go. Wapakoneta has crossed midfield. Here come the Redskins. This is Moyer under center. He's got Mextroff and Naus in the backfield. He's going to hand the ball to Jace Naus off the left side. Gets away from one tackle, and he's taken down right about the line of scrimmage. Number 21, Jace Naus. Yeah, and he doesn't get credit for the tackle on that play, but number 99, Tristan Hanks for Bellbrook, a senior, gets penetration in there into the backfield, and he gets enough contact that slows down uh, Naus and allows the rest of the defense to pursue. You know, Scott, every, every now and then I'll get asked by somebody, why does a team do this all the time? Why do they keep running that play, that play? And, and you and I both know it's to set up something later in the game. So just watch what happens here if they don't set something up. Here comes Moyer. He's got Jolly in motion off to the right side. He's going to fake the handoff. He rolls right, looks downfield. He's going to take it himself. So he avoids the rush. And he's going to go to about the 40-yard line. He'll be taken down by number 20. And that's Sam Barhorse, the senior. Defensive back takes him down. He's going to bring up a gain of five. He's going to bring up third and about six to go from the 40-yard line. Yeah, and Moyer can run the football. He's got 198 yards to go with his passing prowess coming into this game. Averages 2.6 a carry and three touchdowns running the football. And, you know, from a quarterback perspective, uh, every time they get sacked, that counts as negative yardage. So if you're coming in with 200 yards from the quarterback spot, that's not bad. I'm going to toss it back to Big number six for the Red Wapakoneta Redskins. That's Connor Mextrop. He's going to pick up another Cook and Son first down. Yeah, I got to throw out uh, Ryan Price there, number 50 for Wapak, continuing to block. Oh, no, he is short. All the way through that play. He is short, Scott. I thought he picked it up. I thought he got across the, the first down marker, and it is fourth and two. Yeah. And let's see what they do from here. I want to see Beach kick another long field goal. <laughs> Yeah, this would be about uh, 50, 58 yards yeah. if, he, if they decided to kick. I, I, that could be a little deep. It's a big play. If they don't get it, they give Bellbrook the ball. A good <laughs> field position, and they got it. They sure did pick it up. Connor Mextroff just barrels across, and he points to the goal line saying, that's a Wapakoneta first down, a cooking son first down. Actually, Danny, I think he was pointing right at the TV 44 he was, he was. camera. That's right. Because he knew where it was placed, right down there <laughs> on the uh, end zone. What a great view we have the, with the end zone cam like that. So that puts the ball at the 29-yard line. 
first and 10. Wapakoneta leads 10 to nothing. Danny Holbrook, Scott Nurse from Wapakoneta High School. Round two of Ohio High School football playoffs. Redskins trying to advance to the semifinal round. And they'll forward pitch it again to Jason Alice as he cuts back and he picks up a nice yardage of about seven yards. Yeah, kind of the same result, other same side. play, the other side, yeah. yeah. The white side of the field, I like it. You get him out there quick, get him to the outside, allow Jace to, uh, you know. And I love the way Moyer's seat. putting the ball in front of him. He runs right into it, so yeah. it's almost leading him into yeah. it. It's kind of an old school pass play well, there, right? It's, it, you know what, they, they, they saw it something at halftime and it's working, so. Uh, they have moved the ball down the field, so here we go. From the 22-yard line, second and th three yards to go. Moyer's under center. He's got Mextroth and Naus in the backfield. He's going to hand the ball off to Mextroth as he goes up the middle, and he's going to be close to a first down. Let's see where they mark it. Number six, well, in this quarter, Wapakoneta has already surpassed their first yes. half total, so 27 yards rushing. And watch They've Mextra. moved the ball about 35 yards, 40 yards already, even, all on the ground. Even when Mextro's falling down, Scott, he's, he's pushing for yardage. So that's going to bring up third and one from the 20. And they are in the IC signs red zone here. And Moyer's going to call his own number, and it looks like he got enough. IC Signs of Wapakoneta is the home of business startup package. We are local, fast, and friendly. Check us out at icsigns.net. IC Signs is our red zone sponsor, and it is a first down, a Cook and Son first down, and we are in the IC red zone. And I think uh, Coach Moyer probably had a little bit of a spirited discussion with his offensive, offensive unit yeah, and yeah. the offensive line at halftime, and, and come right. out and said, "We're gonna we're gonna power this football." Yeah. Smash mouth football all the way down the field. And they are doing that they exact are doing thing. It. So here comes Moyers. He's going to go under center. He's got Connor Mextroth directly behind him. He's going to hand the ball to Jace Nouse off the left side, and he is taken down, and that'll be a loss of about a yard. Big number 72. There he is again. Sam Vine on the tackle. And this Belbrook defense, as we it's mentioned, uh, is a pretty good defense, only giving up 13 points a game. And I thought early on uh, Wapak would, would would blow right past that, but they haven't. Yeah, you're right. They give up 13 a game. They've got 10 total interceptions on the year. And that defensive front is as good as we've seen all year, Scott. So here comes the Redskins. Moyer's in the gun. He's got Mextro off to his left. He's going to look downfield as he goes back to pass. And he throws to the right side, and he just misses Jolly off to the right side. Kind of threw it behind him. Yeah, he had him, no question about it. A little spin. Caleb Moyer spins the ball right before he throws it, and I think he never quite got a handle on it right. after he spinned the football, and he threw it a little bit off target there. I bet I bet money he'd like to have that one back. So that will bring up third and 12 from the 21-yard line. 4.45 to go here. Wapakoneta leads 10 to nothing as they look to advance to the third round of the Ohio High School football playoffs. Boy, I looked at the weather forecast, and it doesn't. It looks colder next weekend, but uh, nothing that uh, they can't play in. So mid 40s maybe. So there comes yeah, that, that's comfortable football. Absolutely. Weather. Here's Moyer as he looks, swinging out to Jace Nouse, and he just misses him. He faked the handoff to Nouse as he was in motion, and he tried to swing him out, a little wheel route there, and he just misses him. And that's two back-to-back -back throws that Moyer's kind of missed on both of them. Well, he missed one in the first uh, quarter as well. I, I thought, uh, you know, and he's probably disappointed a little bit with himself there. I thought that one, he just needed to put a little touch on it. He was worried, you could tell. Yeah. Looked like he was worried uh, as there was a Bellbrook defender out there, and he wanted to make sure that he didn't, you know, have a mistake, a turnover. So here comes Kyle Beach, and this will be a 31-yard attempt as they line it up from the 21-yard line. Well, no, we're, 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 let's see, I'm, I miscalculated that. Here's Beach, the snap is back, the hold is good, and the kick is up, and it is good as he drills that one. Kyle Beach with his second big kick. That's a 38-yard field goal, 38 yard, and, yeah. and it, it was higher than the uh, ribbons, which are tied to the top of the uh, goal post. With 4.41 to go, the Wapakoneta Redskins lead 13 to nothing right here on WSA. Touchdowns are presented by Allen Davis Insurance, your solutions provider specializing in auto, home, business, insurance, and more. 
Hey, we just got the word that 51-yard field goal yes. in the first half was a school record for Wapakoneta. It broke the record that was 50 yards <laughs> by amazing. Dan Grips back in 2007. When he said that it was it broke the record, I thought, well, you must have broke it by a mile. Yeah, he broke, he broke it, it by a, a yard. A one yard. <laughs> but it's still amazing. It's yes. still he's got a 51-yarder and a 38-yarder tonight. Just incredible. And and he is just. Scott, you don't see NFL kicks like this. Go to the boom, <laughs> back of the end zone. Yeah, here's the last one. Watch this. Scott, that would have been good from from your 50. house. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you get a look at it as it goes through the uprights. It's look it's well this. above the crossbar. Still, uh, you know, just reaching its apex. He's got a strong leg. Well, it's, you it's, asked the guys it's in the booth. exciting. Yeah, you asked the guys in the booth if he plays soccer. They're like, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, he, he – uh, 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 He's an excellent soccer player, is what they said, uh, and plays both sports. So, um, I, I, which I think is great to see. You know, years ago you used to not see that. You used to either play one sport or the other, and I like that uh, he has the opportunity to kick footballs because he's helping Wapakoneta's football team. And there you see Elijah Brooks just taken down to the turf by pick number 57, Jaden Rampiola. And again, Elijah Brooks is held in check there as he loses a yard, and that'll bring up second 11 from the 19. So the story tonight is Kyle Beach, a 51-yarder and a 38-yarder. Here comes Benitez under center. He's going to hand the ball to Elijah Brooks as he tries to go off the left side. And he's going to be met right there by pick number 54 for the Skins. Tyler Hauser, the 6'3", 205-pound senior, says, welcome to town, Mr. Brooks. Well, Mr. Brooks averages 6.8 yards a carry. He had 1,400 yards coming into tonight in 11 games. He's very, very productive. Um, Wapakoneta's defense as a whole has shut him down, comparatively speaking, right? I mean, Absolutely. really not much success. He had one uh, run in the second quarter for about eight yards, and that's his biggest run. And they've done it by committee. Absolutely. So here's Benitez as he's under center. He's got Brooks in motion. He's going to fake the pitch back to Brooks. He's going to throw it across the middle. It's up in the air, and it's picked off. Picked off by number 13, Jeffrey Kohler, as he gets the deflection. Or Oh, saying it hit the floor or hit the grass. Oh, my goodness. Let's take a look at this. Our crew will get the replay here. Yeah, Let's you get a great look. Number 54 jumps up. It goes off his helmet. That's Hauser. Oh, my. And at 13, it looks like he caught it, but the bottom half of the was football was hanging out. That's and you get, you get a look right there. Oh, my. Mark Keller's right on the spot. Here's the better angle, Scott, right here. Now we're going to be able to see it. Yep. There's the tip. Here goes Kohler. Boy, that's close. Boy, that's close. Yeah, I think uh, I think the point is he may have caught it, but the bottom of the football hit the turf. It's blocked. It's the blocked. punt is blocked. It goes into the end zone. It's going to roll out of the end zone, and Wapakoneta does it again. Blocks another punt. And that was what they were famous for in the Van Wert game, Scott. And here they go. They get another big block punt. Wow, and that wasn't even part. That He blocked that with, like, his chest. Yes, you see, he did. Oh, wow. That's number 57, who's been – I'm sorry, number 51. 51. Mikey Lee. Mikey Lee. So Mikey Lee is the hero tonight. Mikey Lee. He blocks the punt. He gives Wapakoneta a 15 to nothing lead. We're getting scores from all over the place here. We've got two great kicks. We've got a safety, a block punt, a big pass play. Tell me, tell me there's nothing better than high school sports. Tell me there's nothing. Yeah, that was awesome. And, and you know, we talked about that uh, at the top of the game, special teams execution yes, and how critical exactly. that is. And you can see there, Bellbrook did not execute as planned, and Wapak certainly did. You get a good look there at Mike Watt. So uh, he, he, <laughs> he turned us down for a half pregame interview, We, we went he? down He's there, a, and we, we begged him for yeah, an interview. Uh, yeah. Former... Uh, Athletic director here. By the way, I, w I would like to thank, um, you know, a Aaron Rex, Scott Minnick. Scott was up here at, at uh, halftime. They've treated us like gold. Oh, yeah, they absolutely. The food, it's wonderful. The, booth, the, the food. people. It's been fantastic. Yes. And uh, so we appreciate that much. Brad Rex, Look, the you, athletic director. Yeah, when you treat people like this, is it no wonder that you have beautiful facilities and great fans like this community has? Absolutely. They, they just, they, they're just wonderful over here. The good part here uh, for Wapak is they got the safety. Now they're going to get the football. Yes. So they can add insult to injury 
uh, which is, I'm sure, what they would like to do at this point. And they've got Jolly back at about the 32-yard line. Because, Danny, it's still 15-0. It's sure. still a two-score game. Absolutely. And we've got a lot of football left. So there's the kick from the safety. And Jolly's going to catch it at a 25. He'll go to the 35, to the 40. He goes up the left side to the 50. He tries to make a seam. There seen. he goes, up the 30. He's got one blocker to beat, and he's taken out of bounds. Oh, my goodness. Are you kidding me? Grant Jolly with the unbelievable return, and he puts Wapak right back in business. Well, he had the touchdown catch, and now he's got a huge return. Watch this. Look at this vision. And he I want you to see number eight blocking ahead yes, for yes. him. Look at Will this. Campbell right there, big block, helping him get the – a few extra yards. I appreciate a blocker downfield. That was close to holding, though. He was afraid that guy was going to yep. turn his back and be a block in the back. But, uh, yeah, so here Wapakonet is in business. First and 10 from the 21-yard line. So here comes Caleb Moyer as he's going to go from the gun. He's got Jace Naus behind him. He's going to hand the ball to Naus off the right side. And Naus is taken down by a host of Golden Eagles. There was some intensity in them coaches on yes, the sidelines there was. just then, wasn't there? Absolutely. We had an interview with Coach Moyer a couple weeks ago, and he is all business. I love his approach. Yeah. I really do. Yeah, we, uh, we we had an interview with him down on the field yes, after the game, yes. after a win, and, and, and I thought he would be a little more relaxed after the he's, win. He, but he's, he's, he's all business, man. I he, love it. Yeah. He, he was very cordial to us. He oh, answered all our questions. Absolutely. Yeah. He's just all business. We'll get down there tonight if they win this game and get another interview with him. Here's Moyer. Naus is in the gun. They're going to hand the ball to Naus, and there's a flag on the field, and we'll get a false start by one of the up men, one of, excuse me, one of the linemen. We're quick to blame the linemen. We probably shouldn't be that way, should we? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure that they have the mics on the officials tonight. I don't think they tonight, do. They so do not, we, yeah. we don't get to hear the number. You know the thing that's – yeah, was, yes, that was. Excuse me, that is a Silver Shears Salon and Spa, offering a full-service salon with experienced stylists and top products. Visit them on Black Oak Street in Wapak, Facebook, or SilverShearsSalonAndSpa.com. Silver Shears is our first call sponsor. Jace Naus with the handoff. It's, he's really Number having a hard time getting going, but uh, that, let's, let's, let's credit that defensive line for Belbrook. They've got his number. Yeah, they've got a nice front four, and then their uh, three linebackers that they have flow to the ball really well. So they do a good job of uh, plugging the gaps and not giving Wapak's running backs anywhere to go. Look, Scott, a, a, a sign of a really good team is when they when you're having your best effort taken away from you and you still find ways to score the ball. Right. You know, and, and that's what Wapakadet is doing right now. So here's Moyer in the gun. He's got Jason now off to his left. Jolly is the man in motion. He's got two receivers to his right. He's under heavy pressure, and he's going to be taken down. Big sack. Uh, a little by, extra little there. extra curricular don't by know 99. If we needed that. Boy, I don't know about that one. Tristan Hanks comes in, hits him hard, and then kind of stands over top of him. A little extra curricular, as Scott said. Watch the replay here. Yeah, just gives Oh, I don't him, like that. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit, a uh, little bit extra there, and. Uh, so I, I'm sure that the officials talk to him about it. It won't happen again. Here comes our guy, Kyle Beach. How far is this one, Scott? 47-yard attempt here. Watch this ball fly. The snap is back. Hold is good. And it's blocked. Blocked at the line of scrimmage. And it is picked up. And that's where the ball will stop is the 41-yard line. So a failed field goal attempt by Kyle Beach. Yeah, it's uh, actually about the 37, 38-yard line. It's about where he was kicking from. So, so, so not a big deal necessarily. It looks like number 55, but uh, Beach makes a tackle, prevents that return from happening any, to, from 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 going any further. That was number 55, Isaac Lees, who blocked the kick. No relation to Mikey Lee. No relation to Mikey Lee. This is Isaac Lees with an S. Lees with an S. Yes. As in Lee's famous recipe, our scoreboard sponsor. Exactly. Nice play on work there, Scott. Yes. You're making me hungry. <laughs> Here's Elijah Brooks off the left side. He tries to find some running room, picks up about four yards. He'll go to about the... About the 45 yard line. I tell you what worries me a little bit about this game if you're a Wapak fan is that Bellbrook has managed to stay around here. They had a big stop in the second quarter. 
when Wapakoneta was down inside the red zone, got the football back. They had uh, probably three points on the on the board on, on the, with a field goal here that they blocked that keeps it as a two-score game. And that's going to end the third quarter. So after three quarters from Wapakoneta High School, the Red Skin, skin excuse me, continue to lead the Bellbrook Golden Eagles 15 to nothing. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Welcome back to Wapakoneta High School. Replays are provided by Al's Woods Diner in Wapak. Wapak's best place for pizza, wings, subs, and burgers. Call 419-738-9111. Hey, that's Woody's. And Woody's has great food. I'm going to tell you, I've been they there a few, <laughs> they quite do, a few times. They do have great food. Let me tell you something. I'm not a salad guy, but yeah. their chicken Caesar salad is the is yeah, amazing. It is. Amazing. It, they make a good hamburger. They make everything too. good. I've never had a bad meal there. I know. <laughs> Hey, I think I discovered where that pink stuff was coming from in the first half. It looks like number 48's got some uh, some of that flex tape on his elbows. Aha, uh -huh, the culprit. You know, the uh, to protect the uh, elbows from the turf burn yes, that you yes, can get. Yes. So here's Benitez, third and two from the 47. He's going to hand up to the second man through. Number 48 on the carry. That is Tanner Stewart, the sophomore tailback. And you're going to see number 22, Corbin Mitchell, close quickly into the hole. Got a little help there from 64, Caden Ware. We've called their names a whole bunch tonight. Sure have. So here we go, 11-12 to go here in the fourth quarter. Bell Brooks on the drive again. This is Benitez. He's under center. He's got Elijah Brooks. He flips it back to the right side. And look at Connor Mextro. Takes him down for a loss of about three. Brother, I'm telling you, that's hunting. He come out of nowhere. Well, just a great job of pursuing the football from the linebacker position. You get a look at him flow into the football. He takes a great angle, and he's able to make contact in the backfield, and that's a loss. That That, that is fantastic football by Connor Mextro there. Fantastic. Look, th this is one of the best backs in the state of Ohio, and they are shutting him down. So here comes Benitez. He's got three in the backfield with him. He's got one split out wide. It's going to be a halfback pass down the right side. He's got a man open, and it's picked off. Picked off by number five. That's Nate Metzger. Nate Metzger stops the drive. That's his second pick tonight. Yeah, he gives the little two sign as he comes up with that one. That is his second pick tonight. And uh, he's the deep safety back there, zone coverage. He sees the pass. He does his job. He's back there and makes a play. Well, nice job. Bellbrook tries to go a little razzle-dazzle there in the tailback. Tanner Killen tries the halfback pass. And number five, Nate Metzger, is all over that. Yeah, and it was thrown a little bit short there, which allowed Nate to cut in and make that play. So here comes Wapakoneta. First and 10 from the 27. Caleb Moyer's in the gun. He's going to hand the ball to Jace now. So he goes back up the middle, and Jace picks up about four to five really tough yards. Maybe his best run of the night, Scott. Yeah, and this, is, uh, that, th this play right here is exactly what Wapakoneta wants to do the rest of this game. And look at those. They, they, yeah. They hold their blocks so well, Scott. Really, really well coached. Well, and I have to say, um, this this might sound a little bit unusual, but Wapak looks like a football they team. They do. Yeah, you're right. They're physically. No, that's, that's not. That's they're, they're physically fit. Yeah. They're, they have size in the right places. You know, their their running backs are big, strong. Their linemen are big and strong, and and, and they're showing success. Connor Mextro with the ball there. He goes for maybe a yard, but he ran about seven yards to get that one yard as he ran down the line. He was hit first by a few defenders, gets away, continues down the line, and maybe a yard, maybe back to the line of scrimmage. So here we go, third and three from the 34. So a big third down here in the fourth quarter from the 34-yard line. Let's see what the skins do. Here comes Moyer. He's in the gun. He's got Jason Nels off to his left. He's got a man in the slot position. He's going to hand the ball to Naus, and he is not going to pick up the first down as he has met right at the line of scrimmage. So Bellbrook doing a great job of defending the third down. Number 21, Jason. So Coach Moyer is going to call his signal caller over to the sideline. It's fourth and three here. I 
Be interesting to see. Uh, I mean, this is pretty deep in your own territory to go for it. Yeah, they're going to bring out the punting unit. Yeah, a little bit of hesitation there. He was thinking about it. Well, look, but, when you, you have know. a weapon like Kyle Beach punting the ball and kicking the ball, this this is a no-brainer. Yeah. So Beach will punt. When you're down to eight, eight minutes and you're up two scores, Beach gets a nice punt as it hits at about the 35, and it's picked up at the 30, and that's immediately where he'll be taken down by number 24 for the Skins. I believe that was number 20. Yeah, number 24. And the crowd thought he threw a flag, but he was just throwing the marker down to mark the spot, I believe. Yeah. Well, you know, Damon's a former baseballer, so, you know, maybe, maybe he got excited. 24 is Jared Bowling. We don't have him on our roster here, but I hear the PA announcer calling his name. So a nice job by that young man to get down on punt coverage. So with 8.09 to go, Wapakoneta continues to lead 15 to nothing here. Danny Holbrook, Scott Nurse from Wapakoneta High School. Fourth quarter action here. The Redskins trying to hold on. This is Benitez handing the ball to Elijah Brooks off the right side. Gets a gain of about three yards. and be taken down by number 45 for the Skins. And that's Joey Truesdale. The linebacker, the six foot two hundred fifteen pound junior. With the carry for Belbrook, gains five on the play. Tackled made by number twenty-two. Yeah, nice Corbin job Mitchell by number twenty-two, Corbin Mitchell Corbin as well. Mitchell Absolutely. He's done a good job all night from that linebacker position. He's an inside linebacker. There's Elijah Brooks, and he has taken down for no gain. So they continue to try to use that the middle of that line to no avail. Eight, Elijah eight, Brooks continues to struggle. And the clock keeps running at 7.30. You know, uh, Danny, I feel like as you get a good look at this play right here, and again, he's met in the middle there. Number 54 gets, is the first one to him, Tyler Hauser, from the defensive end spot. I feel like Wapak has dominated this game, but it doesn't really show it that on the right, scoreboard. Right. And there's another huge stop on third down, and it's going to make Bellbrook go fourth down here. And let's see the decision they have to make from the 37-yard line, down 15 to nothing. And you got to believe, Scott, it may be do or die here going for it. Yeah, and, and as you can see on that replay there, there's six red jerseys there. Uh, so they're focused on, on, on Brooks. So here comes Bellbrook. They will go for it on fourth and three from the 37-yard line. Benitez is under center. He's going to hand the ball to Elijah Brooks. He'll try to go to the right side, and nothing going on. And Wapakoneta gets the ball back on a turnover on downs. And I, I'm, I'm puzzled, Scott. I really am. Well, I, he looked. He looked. Brooks looked very tentative. He did. On that I, well, that's why I'm saying that. He did. And uh, like he was. Uh, you know, had nowhere to go and, and just really didn't know what to do with it. And probably hasn't experienced that play after play all year long like he is tonight. That's a great point. That is a great point. You know, point. so he, he, he just didn't have anywhere to go. There was about six red jerseys in the area. And now Wapakoneta has a chance to really put the nail in the coffin and seal this game. So first and 10 from the 38. Moyer's under center. He's got Naus and Mextro in the backfield with him. He's going to hand the ball to Mextro off the right side. He's going to pick up five, six, seven tough yards. Connor Mextro continues to churn those legs. And I, and I got to believe, Scott, that the ball is going to stay on the ground this late in the game with the backs they have. Yeah, I mean, you see how low Mextro gets. You know, they always say in football, the low man wins. Absolutely. So if you can get your shoulder level, your pad level down below your opponents, you're probably going to win that individual mat matchup. Second and three from the 31-yard line. Wapakoneta continues the 15-0 lead. Caleb Moyer goes under center. He's got Jason Allison, and Connor Mextro, and they saw the tight end move there, and he realized it, so that'll back him up. That was number 81 for the Skins, Ryan Sadler, the 6'4", 200-pound junior. His dad, Paul has been uh, a basketball coach in the area for a long time. Here, he's here at Wapakoneta. Up here in the press box with us. <laughs> you look at that lineup, you look at that roster, and it's six four, six five, six foot. They've got some really, the weight room is busy at Wapakoneta High School. Yeah, they do. And, uh, and, and they, they 
like I said, they passed the eye test and, and they pass it on the field as well. They're 10 and one and looking to make it 11 and one and advance in the playoffs. Yeah, they're gonna get another false start there. I did not see who that was on. And that was our first call of the quarter. Silver Shears Salon and Spa, offering a full service salon with experienced stylists and top products. Visit them on Blackhoof Street in Wapakoneta, Facebook, or SilverShearsSalonAndSpa.com. Silver Shears is our first call sponsor. So we went from second and three to second and 13 now. <laughs> they haven't made a play yet. And they're moving the football in the wrong direction. You just want to see Kyle Beach go long, go 55 yards. Uh, we <laughs> talked about that at the top. Those are the little things. Penalties yep. are drive killers. Yep, they sure are. And there's that forward pitch to Jace Naus as he goes up to about the 37-yard line. Yeah, it doesn't look very pretty, but it's, it's effective. effective. It sure is. That's that's the fourth time they've ran it tonight. They've ran it two times to the right and two times to the left. So very effective. You know, the, here's the thing about this Guapacaneta team, and I've noticed this, they're very unselfish. I don't think, you don't see, they, they, they just care about winning. And everybody plays a role, and they've got so many athletes out there, and it's really fun to watch. Most great teams, whether they're football, basketball, whatever, have that mindset. Yes, yeah. They, they want to win collectively, and, and they're not out for their own, themselves, they're out for the team first. And, uh, you know, as many coaches have said, when the team wins, then the players get recognized. Here's Naus off the right side. He'll pick up about three yards, and that'll bring up another fourth Number down. Number 21, Chase Naus. Let's see what they decide to do here. Fourth and about six. This would uh, this would be about a 50-yard field goal. We know that can be done. Now we know that uh, into the wind also too. Uh, the last field goal attempt was blocked, so that might be the mindset of Coach Moyer as he's going to send Caleb Moyer back on the field, and they'll go for it. Yeah, when you're kicking those longer field goals, sure. your trajectory has to be lower and gives a more of an opportunity to be blocked. So here we go, fourth and six from the 34-yard line. Moyer's in the gun. He looks across the field. He's under heavy pressure. They're going to swing it out to Naus. Here goes Naus. He's going to pick up the first down, and he's going to be taken down at the 20-yard line. And he easily picks that up for another Cook and Son first down. So another great, they ran that play twice tonight, Scott. Yeah, and I really like it. They split two receivers to the left and overload the left side. So the defense is kind of tilted that way. And you can see them just a little screen to Nouse on the outside. And Nouse knows what to do. And a big hit out there by number eight from Bell Brooks. That is Elijah Brooks. He's playing defense. Well, he's probably mad. Yeah, I'm sure you know? he is mad. <laughs> he's probably not real happy because he hasn't been his normal productive self tonight, not not through any fault of his own, but more as a result of the Wapakoneta defense. Here's Moyer, hands the ball off to Nextro. It's a gain of about three yards, and they have entered the IC Signs red zone. IC Signs Wapakoneta is the home of the business startup package. We are local, fast, and friendly. Check us out at icsigns.net. IC Signs is our red zone sponsor. You like that call, didn't you? Yeah, I did, and it, it's quick. You know, you you uh, you read so well. I you know, I wish I could read as fast as you could. Read. I learned in elementary you know. school. Well, <laughs> it was weird. In order to go to the next grade, I had to know. You it. had to read. I did. Yeah. I did. It, had, it came in handy in college too. <laughs> <laughs> Two forty-seven to go here from the seventeen-yard line. First and ten. That's where Caleb Moyer's under center. He's going to hand the ball off to Connor Mextro. He goes across the, about the 14-yard line. Number six, Connor Metro with the You know, this has been a really good football game. And, and, and like I said, other than really now three big plays, right, a touchdown pass, a long field goal, and then a safety, um, a block punt. Yes. Really, it's been very evenly matched game. It has. You were absolutely. The defenses have been fantastic. Yeah. And uh, looks like we've got another timeout on the field here with 2.34 to go. Wapakoneta Kings lead 15 and up, and Bellbrook takes that timeout. Let's take a look at our upcoming schedule. Saturday on WSN, Delphi St. John's and LCC football at 8 o'clock. Delphus Jefferson and Antwerp, 10.30. And at 1 o'clock, live action, Manchester and Defiance in a live broadcast there from WSN. Also, Liberty Benton at 4.30 takes on Liberty Center, the Battle of Liberty. Van Wert versus Sandusky Perkins from Sandusky Perkins High School. And Pandora Gilboa and Macomb in a BBC rematch. 
Take a look at Sunday's schedule. The Ottawa Glendorf and Woodmore in girls soccer. Ottaville and Ottawa Hills in the boys' regional final soccer match. And one from the MAC, New Bremen and Fort Floramie. The girls' regional volleyball championship. So some great action here on WOSN as always. In the fourth quarter, Mansfield 16. Not surprised to see those two teams in the regional final. I was going to say, are you surprised? You know. <laughs> we should just keep that graphic up there each year. Yeah. <laughs> You don't have to revise it much. Looking for the perfect gift of an out-of-town sports fan? WSN can now be streamed anywhere in the world online on Roku and Apple TV for $100 annual donation. Give the gift of hometown sports for the holidays. Sign up on app.wsn.tv or by downloading our Roku and Apple TV apps. So here's Caleb Moyer. He's under center. He's going to hand the ball to Jace Naus off the right side. He's got a hole, and he's going to take it into the end zone. Jace Naus finally breaks free, and he extends the Wapakoneta lead. And my goodness, you knew it was going to happen sooner or later as he busts through the hole, and he gives the Redskins the 21-0 lead. Well, and he just does a nice job of staying patient there, waiting for the blocks to develop, and then he explodes to the outside. I'd love to see it. Uh, and, and as you mentioned earlier, Danny, uh, sharing the football yep really a team effort here we've had jolly on a touchdown we've had Naus on a touchdown we've had 51 mikey lee block and get a safety and then of course we've had our kick kick field goals uh Kyle beach as he gets the extra point yeah and he makes it 22 to nothing with 228 to go the wapakon redskins extend their lead 22 to nothing over the bellbrook eagles Our scoreboard is presented tonight by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wapak and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Home style happens here. Don't forget to stick around after the game. Check out highlights of tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner on the WSN YouTube page from tonight's game. And you and I have a pretty good idea who we're going to put down there in the winner's we circle. We think we know. We think we know. We'll keep keep stick around, folks. Yeah, we don't want to give it away. But you'll get a kick out of it. That was like a bullet. That was like a bullet. That looked like my two iron. <laughs> <laughs> 22 to nothing, you talk about anything. <laughs> you know? Uh, <laughs> Last no week we were talking about the Ohio State-Penn State game, which you attended. This week we're talking about your right. golf game. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, that's how I'd like to hit it anyway, low that's and right. hard. And, and <laughs> that's right. It doesn't Number always work out that way. Come on, Kyle. We've been talking all game about your yeah. kicking ability, and then you <laughs> squib one down there. Yeah, I think that was intentional, though. <laughs> oh, goodness. So let's see what Bellbrook can do here, down 22 to nothing. Yeah, not much time. I think, you know, you'd like to put something on the board just to say you were there, right, To at this point. So Benitez throws a little screen pass out to number 48. He gets loose. He takes it down to the midfield to the right side, excuse me, the left side. And that's number 48 on the reception. That's Tanner Stewart, the sophomore. Tailback comes out of the backfield and a nice big pickup. And that'll be another Cook and Son first down. Yeah, and that's his second reception of the game. We mentioned he hasn't uh, had a lot of catches this year. He had eight coming into the game, so he's got 10 now. But he certainly knows what to do with it when he does catch it. So here's Luke Benitez. He swings it out to the left side and he finds Elijah Brooks, but he steps out of bounds at about the 47, 48 yard line. Not much of a gain there. Benitez finds him there on the left side. And he was just hit immediately. Yeah, Wapakoneta has done a really good job tonight of what I would call assignment football. Yes, yes. Each player has played their position extremely well. So here's Benitez. As he looks across the field and he hands the ball off to 48. Nothing. Didn't fool anybody. And they take him down for a loss, and that clock continues to run. Yeah, and that's Caden Ware again, number 64. We've called his number quite a few times, and he gives a little finger wag here at the end to say, yes, no, 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 you're not, no. You're not running ahead on us. Not on my field. So Bellbrook's going to take another timeout with 148 to go. Wapakoneta continues to lead 22 to nothing. So obviously uh, this one appears to be in the bag, Scott. Wapakoneta will go to the next round. Um, yeah, do no, we have an idea who they will play? And who they play? Baden, Hamilton Baden is what I hear from the voice of the. And they are up 41 to 6 in the fourth quarter. So Hamilton 
debate. I just, all I got to do is ask and I get an answer. Wow, yeah. <laughs> um, so we will obviously get to work on Hamilton Baden and see what they have. And well, and as you mentioned earlier in the game, that uh, because Wapakoneta uh, has such a great defense, they have such great s special teams, and they are run oriented. You know, the, you really have a chance to keep the Absolutely. game close and have success as you move in advance further into the playoffs. So here's Benitez as he looks across the middle, and he's got a man out there, and it's a perfect strike to number 15 on the reception, number Carson seven. Levinsky. That is his first catch of the night, and he's their leading receiver. Yeah, you're absolutely right. He came he came into the game uh, with 299 yards, averaging 13.5 per catch, and, and really, Bellbrook hasn't thrown the ball much tonight. I think if they'd mixed it up a little bit, that might have helped uh, Brooks get a little bit of space. Benitez's intended target was number nine, Eldon Korber, but he throws it over top of the outstretched arms of Korber, and that'll bring up second, excuse me, let's see, second and 10 from the 31. Yeah, Jeffrey Kohler, number 13 out there on the coverage. Uh, we haven't called his number a lot, a lot tonight, but really all the Secondary for Wapakoneta has done a great job in pass coverage all night. Second seven from the 31. Here's Benitez, and it's oh, picked it's off, back. picked off down the right side, and he's going to take it to the house. Number 24, are you kidding me? Jared Mullen. Jared Mullen takes it into the house for a pick six to extend that lead. You know, I was just going to say, I, I was talking about uh, Jeff Kohler on the other side, and I was just going to say, we haven't really mentioned Jarrett Mullen tonight, and then he does and this. Yes, he does. He oh, just my steps goodness. in front of it, and he's off, and uh, big big number 60 for Bell. You and I could have no took chance. that. Yeah, you and I could have took that one, and he was wide open. So Wapakoneta extends the lead to 28 nothing. They're scoring every way tonight, Scott. Well, and again, pressure by number 57 for Wapakoneta. Uh, Ram Jaden Rampula forced that quick throw. And look at him go. And Kyle Beach is going to come in and tack on the extra point. So with 1.15 to go, the Wapakoneta Redskins. And tomorrow morning, Scott, it's going to look like a blowout. Now you and I know this was a lot closer than that. We'll be back for the conclusion of this game. And that young man entered the IC red zone. IC signs Wapakoneta is the home of the business startup package. We are local, fast, and friendly. Check us out at iCsigns.net. IC Signs is our red zone sponsor. So Wapakoneta into the red zone quite a bit in the second half. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I'm going to talk about it. Yes. So uh, <laughs> at the top of the game, we talked about mixing it up and having a big strike, having big plays. And Wapakoneta tonight has had the big plays all night long. Big field goals, block pump for safety, interception, pick six. I mean, they've had the big plays at timely moments in the game that have allowed them to extend and expand this lead. And, and, and really, if you watched this whole game, the, the statistically, sure, these sure, teams yeah. are probably fairly close. I would say so, you're right. But it's just those big plays at opportune moments that have really separated both of these teams and allowed Wapakoneta to, to, to walk out with a, what, what looks like a win, very lopsided win Absolutely. when really it was very well deserved. <laughs> right. So here's Benitez under center. He's going to go back to pass. He looks to the right side and he slings it over there and he's got his man out there and he just misses him. And that was number 15, Carson Levansky. And Scott, you got to believe the, the young men from Wapakoneta that fell to Bellbrook on that field last year at Bellbrook when they lost that game 42 to 35. You got to believe right now they're on cloud nine. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, it's those guys probably this summer that were in the weight room. Remembering that game. Remembering yes. that game and being motivated by that game if they fell short because I tell you, they look like a football team tonight, a really good football team that Hamilton Baden's going to have to try and deal oh with. Oh, my goodness. That's going to be a fantastic uh, game. You know, I, I think I, I think uh, let's not be surprised how far Wapakoneta goes in this tournament. So here's Benitez. He rolls around. He finds Brooks out to the left side. He'll be taken down. Seven, the clock's going to continue to run. Brooks has nice hands there. He gets he the does. catch, but he's immediately tackled. Bellbrook only has one timeout left, down 29 to nothing. They don't appear to be in any hurry. Yeah, I think this is the last play of the game, most likely. They're, they're just uh, snapping the football here, probably because they have to. There's 
Benitez as he looks across the field. He's going to throw it down the right side. He's got two defenders down there, and it's just going to go off the outstretched hand of number nine, Eldon Korber. He's defended by number five, Nate Metzger, and number 10, Grant Jolly. Yeah, probably underestimated is that Wapak that is secondary. You get a good look at him, number 13 back there, number five, number 10, number the, number uh, 35, and number one. We've called all their numbers tonight and all their names, Logan look, Crew. You want to you, you crack this starting lineup, you're going to be athletic because there's yeah. a real good athletes on that team. Yeah. And you and they've got a big football team here at Wapakoneta. So that'll bring up fourth and six. So this will do it here. A good job by the officiating crew oh, tonight, done, you know. Great job. A couple guys from Spencerville, a couple guys from Delphus, a couple guys from Lima. And they're going to pick up another Cook and Son first down with a strike there to number 12, Tanner Killen. So that'll extend the chains and move it up to a Cook and Son first down. Cook and Son Plumbing and Heating, specializing in old time syrup since 1978. Find us on Facebook or call 419 738 8956. Here comes Benitez as he's going to crank it up and throw to the end zone. He throws it down there. Oh, just about picked up by Tanner Killen. And it goes out of the end zone. Well covered by Logan Crow and Jarrett Mullen. That should be the last play of the game here with eight seconds to go. Well, I think, uh, you know, that that's why they're throwing the football and, and took that time out. I think they want to try to put a score on the board. Try to get something positive, yeah. absolutely. All right here, so. Here's the last play of the game as Benitez throws it to the right side. And yeah, that one more. Yeah, that'll go out of bounds. It'll turn the ball over to Wapakoneta. Excuse me, that was third down. That was a bullet. I thought Benitez has, yeah. has a good arm. He really throws the football well. Um, you know, I, I wonder what it would have been like if we they had thrown the football a little more oh, yeah. early in the game. I wondered about that because they got really good athletes. So here is the last play of the game as Benitez is under center. He's a junior, by the way. He will be back. He rolls to the left. He's looking downfield. He's just going to heave it up here into the corner of the end zone, and it is picked off. Ah. <laughs> number five, Nate Metzger, gets interception number, number three. three. My goodness. And that will do it, folks, from Wapakoneta High School. The Wapakoneta Redskins advance to the third round of the Ohio High School State football playoffs with a sounding 29 to nothing win. And let's take a look at the bracket here. Wapakoneta will play Baden. I'm assuming that'll be somewhere near the Dayton area with Baden being a Cincinnati team in the Hamilton area and Wapakoneta being north here. And you look at the other side, West Brown and Monroe will play the school Tippecanoe. So, uh, hey, Wapakoneta is one more, one more win away. Yeah, it might be in Sydney, Ohio. Uh, oh, that's that true. Seems yeah, that's to right. Be a good central spot. Yeah, absolutely. And a great stadium, by the way, to play in. Absolutely. So that'll do it. The Wapakoneta Redskins defeat the Bellbrook Golden Eagles, 28 to nothing. We're gonna get down to the field. We'll have our Stalia Hustle Award winner tonight. We'll get an interview with Coach Moyer right after these messages. All right. So, Coach, how you doing? Good. Congratulations. How are you? Thank you for taking mess? the time. Yeah. So here's Good. what we'll do. We'll uh, I'll start the interview out. You want me to? Oh, he'll hand. Yeah, he'll, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll ask you just a couple questions. You right. hand the interview, hand the mic off to Scott, and then we'll okay. bring Kyle in. He's our Stolly Player of the Game. So perfect. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna congratulate you on your 200th win, if that's okay. Yep. yep. Uh, Back here with head coach Travis Moyer, the Wapakoneta Redskins get a big 29 to nothing victory. Move on to the third round of the playoffs. Coach, it looked like your team was scoring every way they had to tonight because that Bellbrook defense was really stiff. It really was, and we knew coming in, obviously, it was going to be a challenge for us. Uh, they're a very well-coached football team. Uh, they're a very experienced football team, and we knew coming from last year that they were going to play hard. So, fortunately for us, I thought we played exceptionally well in all three phases and uh, uh, competed at a high level tonight. Yeah, your defensive backs were really ball hawks tonight as you had three interceptions, and uh, they just really played well in the defensive backfield. They really did, and obviously, it all starts up front. You know, I thought we were able to do a good job against the run, which forced them to pass uh, uh, with their play-action pass 
pass, and we really it, it, it talked about it, the importance of that back end holding up in that play action pass game, and uh, obviously they were exceptional tonight, and uh, it was really big for us. Yeah, I want to ask you before you, I let you go, congratulations on win number 200. Uh, but I also want to ask you about your kicker, Kyle Beach. What a weapon you have in that young man. Oh, yeah, we're very fortunate, you know, to have him a big part of our program. Uh, you know, obviously, he does a, a lot of special things for us in terms of field position. And, uh, you know, you saw him on a complete display tonight in terms of his talent. And uh, very, very fortunate to have him part of our team. Well, congratulations on the win. You move on. So uh, good luck and best of luck next week. Thanks so much for having us. Thank Let's you. Let's bring uh, Scott Nurse in and our Stolly Hustle Award winner, Kyle Beach. Beach. This young man, Scott, was, was automatic tonight from 51 and 38. Yeah, let, just talk a little bit about the work that goes in your soccer player to football player. Tonight you set the record. After a thousand games of Wapakoneta football, no one's kicked it farther than 51 yards. Yeah, it feels good. I mean, I thank my soccer coach for believing in me and letting me kick for the football team as well. I thank Coach Moore for having faith in me to kick that far. So it feels good. Kyle, when you're out there and, and, you, and you get a chance for a 51-yard field goal, is there any nerves? Because you look like you've been doing it your whole life. It's just, <laughs> it's grown on me. I mean, <laughs> this is my second year kicking. I mean, it feels good to go out there and just help the team out. Yeah. Hey, I got to talk about it. Three records went down tonight, but actually a fourth. Thousandth football game for Wapakoneta, 51-yard field goal. It's Coach Moyer's 200th win, and they tell me, this was the first time we've ever had a Stolly Hustle Award winner that was a kicker. So congratulations, you're a first. <laughs> Show a little emotion here, Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Kyle Beach is our Stolly Hustle Award winner tonight. The Wapakoneta Redskins get a big 29-0 win.